जय टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम सुलेखा सक्सेना असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ई सी डिपार्टमेंट ए के जी ई सी गाजियाबाद टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू रिव्यू एंड एक्सप्लेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ माइक्रो प्रोसेसर विच इज अ कोर सब्जेक्ट ऑफ सी एस आई टी ब्रांच सेकेंड ईयर स्टूडेंट्स सो वॉट इज अ टाइमिंग डायग्राम वी विल फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद वॉट इज टाइमिंग डायग्राम टाइमिंग डायग्राम बेसिकली रिफर्स टू the representation of execution time or time taken by any operation with respect to t states and what is a t state t state is basically one time period for a microprocessor so timing diagram we can say it is a graphical representation of various machine cycles done by a microprocessor so we will start from the basic topic that is what is an instruction an instruction is basically a set of work assigned by an instruction to microprocessor and an instruction consist of two parts that is opcode and operand opcode defines what the microprocessor has to perform and operand is the data on which microprocessor will perform certain operation so the time required to complete one instruction of a microprocessor is called as its instruction cycle and one instruction consist of several operations including opcode fetch memory read memory write io read io write and some other operations like acknowledgement of interrupt bus idle trap halt and hold so these various works the time required to complete one operation of microprocessor is called as machine cycle so as we can see that there are basically five types of machine cycles that is opcode fetch memory read memory write io read and io write so an instruction cycle consists of minimum one machine cycle and maximum five machine cycles in case of 8085 now in terms of machine cycle machine cycle is the time required to complete one operation using microprocessor and to complete one micro machine or one work of microprocessor it requires certain amount of time the smallest unit of time is called as one t state which is nothing but equal to one time period so the time required to complete any operation is specified in terms of t state and minimum one machine cycle consists of 3 and maximum 60 states minimum 3 state and maximum 60 states so the time required for an instruction consist of several machine cycles that is 1 to 5 machine cycle and the time required to complete one machine cycle consists of several t states that is 3 to 6 t state now first we will analyze what do you mean by machine cycle so as i have already told that the time required to complete a single operation for microprocessor is called as one machine cycle and the operation is performed based on control and status signals so for 8085 microprocessor it consists of three status signals io oblique m bar s1 and s0 and three control signals that is read bar write bar and interrupt acknowledgement when io oblique m bar is 0 it means it access from memory and when it is 1 this means that microprocessor accesses from io when s0 is 0 it performs a read operation and when s0 is 1 it performs write operation or we can say that s0 is for write and s1 is for read also for these control signals 
when we have to perform read operation, read bar will be 0. When we have to perform write operation, write bar will be 0. And when there is interrupt acknowledgement, then again its active low signal will be 0. So, for opcode fetch machine cycle, as the opcode is always fresh from memory, so I oblique m bar is 0. And when S1 and S0 are 1, 1, then opcode fetch occurs. During opcode fetch, opcode is read from memory. So, read bar will be 0 and both other control signals will be inactive, that is 1, 1. For memory read machine cycle, as we are performing memory read and memory write from memory, so I oblique m bar will be 0. For read operation, S1 will be 1 and for write operation, S0 will be 1, as you can see from here. Also, during read operation, read bar will be 0 and during write operation, write bar will be 0 and other signals will be 1, 1. Similarly, for IO read and IO write, IO oblique M bar will be 1. All, all remaining signals will be same, that is S1 is 1 for read, S0 is 1 for write. For read operation, read bar will be 0 and for write operation, write bar will be 0. When S1 and S0 are 1, 1 and we are accessing IO, then it is INTA bar circle that is interrupt acknowledgement because hardware interrupts come from IOs. So, during when IO equal to 1 and S1, 1, 0, 1, 1, then it is INTA bar machine cycle. In that case, INTA bar signal will be 0 and other two are inactive. There are some other uh, cycles that is bus idle machine cycle when the microprocessor wait. In that case, IO oblique M bar will be 0, 0, 0 and S1 and S0 are 0, 0. Since microprocessor is not performing any operation, so these three signals are inactive. Similarly, during acknowledgement of RST and trap also, since these are hardware interrupts, so IO oblique M bar will be 1 and for the other two signals will also be 1, 1. In also, all three signals are inactive, that is 1, 1, 1. During halt and hold, IO oblique M bar will be in high impedance state. S1 and S0 for halt signal it is 0, 0 and for hold it is do not care. And in both the cases, interrupt acknowledgement will be 1 and all both the control signals will be in high impedance state. So, this is the combination table based on which we find out the control and status signals for different machine cycles. Now, to define a timing diagram, first of all, we have to define what is a clock signal. As we can see that a clock signal if I talk about ideal clock pulse, it consists of 0 and 1. In case of ideal 0 to 1 requires 0 amount of time, but in practical it requires certain amount of time to rise from 0 to 1 or to fall from 1 to 0. So, in actual con clock pulse will be just like this with certain amount of rise time and certain amount of finite amount of fall time. So, we will draw a clock pulse. This is logic 0, this one is logic 1, this is rise time, this is fall time and if we have to talk about one time period, then this will be one time period which is called as 1 T state for micro processor. So, if we can say that there is a, a microprocessor with frequency 8 0 8 megahertz, sorry. Then we can say that the 1 T state or 1 time period of microprocessor will be 1 by 8 microsecond. So, in this way we calculate 1 T state or 1 time period of microprocessor. Now, in timing diagram, we will draw all the buses and signals. So, for signal, signals are represented by signal, signal single line, logic 0, logic 1 and for tri state it is in between so it is not 0 not 1 but in between some tri state for buses that is group of signals that is address bus and data bus 
देर आर मोर देन वन बिट्स सो वी ड्रॉ द सिग्नल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टू लाइन्स एंड टू शो द चेंज ऑफ बिट्स वी यूज दिस क्रॉस सो वी ड्रॉ दिस सिग्नल एज क्रॉस दैट इज सम बिट्स विल चेंज फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन एंड सम फ्रॉम वन टू जीरो and then valid state and again to show the change we make a cross so now i will show you what are the signals that we will draw in timing diagram during timing diagram we will show address bus ad0 se ad7 plus high order address bus that is a8 to a15 High order address bus takes minimum three machine cycles from T one to T three to completely load on the bus. For low order address data multiplex, we use ALE signal. When ALE is one, address is available during T one. it requires t1 t state to at load address and after that ale will be zero and data will be available during t2 and t3 t state so first of all we will draw high, with respect to clock we draw higher order address bus low order address data multiplex bus and ale signal after that we will draw control signals that is read bar or write bar so during read operation or write operation read bar or write bar will be low and as we can see the data is available during t2 and t3 so read bar or write bar will be low during t2 to t3 of state so it is zero during t2 to t3 t state next is io oblique m bar we have already seen that during memory operation it is zero and for io operations it is one and last we will draw s1 and s0 we take the value of these from the table which we have seen previously and draw it for entire timing diagram so in this way there are various signals which which draw in timing diagram first one is clock second is address high order address bus a8 to a15 third is low order address bus ad0 to ad7 to demultiplex it we use ale to fourth is ale next we draw control signals that is read bar e or write bar you know don't need to draw both the signals because only one will be active at a time next we will draw status signals that is io oblique m bar basically we can draw all the status signals on single line or we can separate io oblique m bar with this s1 and s0 so these all are the signals which we will draw in a single timing diagram so i have already told you what is a t state t state is basically one time period or one clock period of a microprocessor and the time or instruction execution time is generally specified in terms of number of t states then machine cycle the time required to complete one operation of accessing memory io is called as machine cycle and in microprocessor there are five machine cycles of code fetch memory read memory write io read and io write in addition there are certain extra machine cycles that is interrupt acknowledgement hold hold and reset so as i have already told you that one machine cycle consist of 3 to 60 states and one instruction cycle consist of 1 to 5 machine cycles and now what is instruction cycle the time required to complete one execution of an instruction is called as instruction cycle now we talk about the function of microprocessor we can say that the function of microprocessor is divided into two cycles that is fetch and execute 
द वे माइक्रो प्रोसेसर फेच इज ऑपकोड फ्रॉम मेमोरी इज कॉल्ड एज फेच साइकिल एंड ड्यूरिंग एग्जीक्यूट साइकिल माइक्रो प्रोसेसर फेच इज ऑपरेंट फ्रॉम मेमोरी so when we talk about the time required to fetch and execute an instruction it consist of fetch cycle and execute cycle so as i have told you that an instruction cycle consist of several machine cycles that is minimum 1 to 5 and one machine cycle consist of 3 to 6 p states and microprocessor has basically seven machine cycles out of which these three are very important opcode fetch memory read io read memory write and io write and there are two specific cycles that is interrupt acknowledgement and bus idle or wait cycle as we have already seen that higher order address requires minimum three states so if any operation takes lesser than 3 state then the operation will not be completed because address will not be available on the address bus so minimum time required to complete an operation is 3 t state so except opcode fetch memory read memory write io read and io write all are of 3 t states during opcode fetch microprocessor has to perform certain extra operations to decode the opcode and generate control and timing signals also it has to perform some other work if there is a 16 bit operation so the opcode phase cycle varies from 4 to t states to 60 state normally all the opcode takes 40 state during certain special instructions which requires more 16 bit operations or extra time to access memory it requires 60 states so now we move towards opcode fetch machine cycle it is very important on all the instruction consist of opcode fetch machine cycle during opcode fetch microprocessor fetches opcode from memory so basically it is a memory read operation so during opcode fetch io oblique m bar as we are taking opcode from memory so io oblique m bar will be 0 S one and S zero, as we have seen from table, it is one one. As we are using read cycle, so read bar will be zero during T two and T three. The fourth cycle is used to decode and execute the instruction. And as I have told you, there are certain instructions, basically sixteen bit operations. The opcode phase cycle extends from four to sixty states. so this is the timing diagram of simple opcode phase cycle first we will draw the clock signal that is one fall and one rise or we can draw vice versa so opcode phase consist of 4t state so we have drawn four clock pulses with respect to this we draw first of all higher order address bus higher order address bus takes three states so it is started from t1 to t3 after that and specified then low order address data multiplex bus ad0 se ad7 during t1 state address is uploaded low order memory address and during t1 ale will be 1 after that during t2 and t3 data will be uploaded that is opcode and after that it is floating state so this dash dash is called as full floating state and why there is a floating state because memory is slower as compared to microprocessor so once read instruction is there microprocessor will be wait in wait state unless the data is available from memory so there is a floating state so once the address is loaded it requires certain amount of time to load the data that is opcode so once the read bar during read bar will be low it starts to read and after that during after certain time opcode is available during t2 on data bus now the remaining three signals io oblique m bar s1 and s0 we can draw all these signals in combined form like multiple or group or bus signals because 
these signals will remain same from first to last state. For IO oblique M bar, this is its memory, so it is 0 and S1, S0 will be 1, 1. So, we can write it from starting to end or we can also draw IO oblique M bar separately just like this. And S1 and S0 will be 1, 1 only. So, both the lines will be C. So, this is a simple opcode fetch machine cycle. So, if we talk about the time required to transfer a byte from memory to microprocessor. So, how a data byte is transferred? First of all, we will write during T1 machine cycle lower byte for example, if we have taken an address of 2005 and from this address we have to read op code which is 4f. So, during T1 machine cycle lower order address that is 05 will be specified on AD0 to AD7. During this time, ALE will be 1 and after that ALE will be 0. After that, T1 to T3 is required to load higher order address bus on A date say A15. So, at T1, higher address is placed on A to A15 and lower order memory address 05 is placed on AD0 say AD7. And during T1, ALE will be 1. After that, ALE will be 0. And also, IO oblique M bar will remain 0 from last starting to end. Now, during T2, read signal is sent out. Once the read signal is sent out, it is active low during 2 clock periods that is T2, T3. And once the read signal is low, during T3, memory data during T2, after read signal is active low, the opcode fetch that is 4F will be available on data bus from T2 to T3. After that, read signal again goes high, which causes the bus to go into high impedance state that is unspecified. And during T4, machine code is decoded by the instruction decoder and generate control and timing signals. That is content of A is copied into register. So, this is the whole process of opcode fetch machine cycle. Now, during memory read, memory write, IO read and IO write, there is no extra part of decoding. Only the data is available on the bus. So, during read and write cycles, we require only 3 T state because only data and memory are available. So, we can say that for memory operation, IO oblique M bar will be 0. Similarly, it is 1 for IO operation. S1 and S0 are 1 and 0 for read and 0 and 1 for write. For read, read bar will be 0 and for write, write bar will be 0 and all the read and write operation requires only 3 straight because no extra time is required to fetch and to decode the instruction. So, if we have to perform an opcode fetch plus memory read, so the total cycles will be 4 for opcode fetch and 3 for memory read that is 70 states. So, this is the timing diagram of opcode memory read machine cycle. Again, we have drawn only 3 clock cycles T1, T2, T3. The higher order address is loaded from entire T1 to T3. AD for, for AD0 to AD7 during T1, low order memory address will be loaded on bus. Then there is a floating state waiting for data to be ready on data bus. And then during T2 and T3, data will be available on data bus. So, during T2, T3 read bar will be low and after that data will be available. Since it is memory read, so IO oblique M bar will be 0. If we talk about IO read, then IO oblique M bar will be 1. For read operation, S1, S0 will be 1, 0. And 
ALE signal V1 during T1. So, this is the simple timing diagram of memory read machine cycle. So, this is an example if we talk about MVI A32 where 32 data is copied on ac to accumulator. So, we have to draw a code fetch plus to read 32 we require one memory read. So, there are 4 plus 3 that is 70 states and this is the diagram of OPCO MVI A32 instruction. So, if we talk about an example, consider a memory read machine cycle, the clock frequency is given as 2 megahertz. So, the T state will be 1 by 2 that is 0.5 microsecond. The execution time for opcode fetch will be 40 state that is 40 into 0.5 with this 2 microsecond. And the execution time for memory read will be 3 T state. So, 3 T into 0.5 that is 1.5 microsecond. So, if we talk about an instruction MVI A comma 32, so it requires two machine cycle that is opcode fetch plus memory read. Opcode fetch requires two and memory read requires 1.5. So, this instruction takes 3.5 microsecond to complete the full instruction cycle. And if we talk about machine cycle, each operation requires only 2 or 1.5 microsecond. Similarly, we can easily draw memory write cycle. This is the I O oblique M bar S1 and S0 and it also requires only 70 states to execute the operation. This is the timing diagram for memory write cycle. You can see from here that it with respect to clock, higher order address well will be same, low order address bus will be same, ALE will be same the signal only S10 and S01 for write and instead of read bar here is write bar. So, during write operation that is T2, T3 once the write bar will be low after that data will be available on data bus. So, I hope these three machine cycles are quite clear to all of you. We have already studied opcode fetch, memory read and memory write machine cycle. Also discusses the concept of instruction cycle, machine cycle and T state. So, in next lecture, we will continue and read few more machine cycles that is IO read, IO write and interrupt acknowledgement. Thank you.